Greetings, LW Tech. My name is Greg Bem, and this video is being recorded at the beginning of spring quarter 2018. The library is excited to announce that it will be phasing out Noodle Tools, a platform it has been using to promote citation management and citation generation for years. We are moving to another software platform, Zotero, which we believe offers a comparable experience and also promotes open source software, meaning that it is free and developed by and for the community. We will be turning off Noodle Tools, seen here at the end of this spring quarter, to allow students the opportunity to transition their stored citations from Noodle Tools to Zotero. The library has already begun to teach Zotero and will continue to do so in classes moving forward. If you have questions about Zotero, your librarians invite you to email library at lwtech.edu or visit the library to have an in-person discussion. In this video, I'm going to explore how to access Zotero, show what it looks like, and explore how it can function in managing citations. I will also explore how the software can export sources as citations for you to use in your research papers and projects. First and foremost, the place to start with Zotero is here at zotero.org. By going to this website, you can download the software for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And also get links to the plugins for Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. The website is also where you can register for Zotero. Once you have installed Zotero, open it up and before you do anything else, click on edit and go to the preferences menu. When here, click on the sync tab it might be the default tab that is open and add your username and password. You can see here, I am already added to this version of Zotero, meaning I've added my username and password to it. Setting up sync allows you to have your sources stored in your local version of Zotero, as well as your account on the Zotero website and on any other synced devices. Note that there are many other settings available in Zotero. You can see them here, but we're not going to go into these during this video. I encourage you to visit them in your own time to make the most out of this software. A few notes on the general layout of Zotero. On the left-hand side of the screen, make it a window here in case anything gets cut off in the video. On the left-hand side of the screen, you will have the My Library section, which allows you to see all of your saved resources. You can create folders here, which can help you organize by class or assignment or subject. I will create one and call it tutorial number two for this video. Okay. You will also be able to see all of your sources, even if they are not added to a collection by clicking on my library. Note that I have a book called Racism from my project where I'm studying uh, racism and where it is prevalent in the United States. Note too that there is a folder called Unfiled Items for sources I have not put into collections. This can be helpful for situations where I may have stored a source but I've forgotten about it or not used it yet. The center panel lists all of the resources you have ever put into Zotero. <clears throat> These sources could be websites, movies, books, articles, and more. Click on the source to see more information about it displayed on the right-hand side of the screen. You will see for my book, Racism, that not all the data has been added. And I could add more data or remove some of the data manually if I wanted. To add a source using Zotero, go to the main toolbar above the list of sources and click the green arrow, the green plus, sorry. This will show you a drop down of different types of sources. The most popular common sources are listed, but you can click more to see a full list of source types. 
Another handy tool for document setup identifiers like ISBN numbers is the WAN tool, which uses a database to identify the source you're trying to add. For example, if I added the ISBN of racism into this field here, Zotero would automatically find the book. I will do this for this video. Let me copy the ISBN number of the racism book I already have in here. And now I'm going to delete the racism book. Move to item to trash. And I will add in the ISBN to the magic wand tool. Hit enter and it finds it anew. <clears throat> it's automatically added, and now if you think about it, it will automatically add it, but where is it finding the information from? Sometimes the tool does not work perfectly because it might find information data that is incorrect from the databases that it is looking in. So you will also always want to check the source that gets auto-generated to make sure that everything looks right. For example, here, notice that the abstract ends with the word A and that it is cut off. Other data may also be incomplete or unnecessary for you, so you might want to double check that. Finally, if you want to take sources in Zotero and turn them into a bibliography or a works cited page, you can actually right click on the source and you can click create bibliography. This will pull up the window as seen here, which allows you to choose a citation style and the type of export that you want. Let us choose MLA 8th edition. It's already selected here for me. And then make sure that bibliography is selected and copy to clipboard is selected. Now I'm going to click OK. I'm going to um, open up Microsoft Word. Click on blank document. And let's control V for paste. And you can see that everything is pasted here as a citation um, from Zotero for the book, Racism. Everything seems to come out perfectly. I will want to double check, of course, all of the data and make sure that it looks appropriate. There may, of course, be incorrect URLs. There may be spelling errors, misspellings, etc. Because it's pulling data in from Zotero, it's not going to automatically check everything. All right, now that you have seen how Zotero, the desktop app works, I will show you briefly what it looks like to see the Zotero library in your browser when using the browser plugin. Uh, when logging into the website with your account, first I need to do that. If you do it from scratch, you will see this. Of course, you can also click on the upper right username link here and then click on library and it will load the items that you have in your library. The browser version does not have all of the functionality of the desktop software, but you can view and do some manipulation of sources here. One of the most convenient and incredible tools was for Zotero in our current age of information seeking is the plugin. After you install it from the plugin page, which is here, simply visit a page in your browser and you can use the plugin to copy the source information into your Zotero desktop app. So you have to have Zotero open as well. So let's say I found an article on New York Times that I want to use in my paper or save for later reference. First, I will make sure I'm on the page I want to save. So here we go. Then I will click on the Zotero icon. You will notice a small dialog box pops up. It may be hidden in this video. And that is all you need to do if you go back to your Zotero app. So here it is or on the web page into your library. You will see the source. That's all you need to do. The source is now added to your library using the plugin.
At this point, you are probably exhausted by all of this Zotero talk, but I hope you have learned something today and I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions or want to learn more, stop by the library and say hello. We look forward to seeing you and seeing you use Zotero. Thank you so much.